This episode is sponsored by JDAQA Software Testing, your scalable solution for manual, automated, security, and performance testing. Check us out at JDAQA.com. And with that, let's get on with the show. This is the first customer hosted by Jay Agnew. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the First Customer Podcast. My name is Jay Agner. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Tommy Duart. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We worked so hard on, on getting the name proper. Tomei Duarte. Did I get it close? Yeah, quite close. All right. It was close. Yeah, right. As long as I was close, I, was, I wanted to say Tommy Duart just to mess with you. Penguin Objective is a consulting firm we're going to hear about today. Tommy, how are you, man? How's, how's business doing so far this year? I'm good. It's been a great start of the year. A lot of stuff that had been in the works in Q4 that kind of unlocked now at the beginning of the year. So a couple of busy weeks and looks like Q1 is going to be a record set for me. So quite happy out. Beautiful. And uh, this is not on my questions list, but I am just curious. How do you keep track of what your you know, cash flow and your ins and outs? And is it a spreadsheet? Is it QuickBooks? Is it some sort of tool? Like, what do you use to kind of keep, so you know that Q1 is the best year of your business so far? I'm very much a spreadsheet man. I used to, in in previous roles working for, you know, in startups, I had to manage budgets. And so I got very familiar with spreadsheets as a tool. So even my CRM is a spreadsheet for me. Also, then I use Notion for the actual detail, but from a bird's eye view, everything is one massive spreadsheet that I mm. keep track of everything in the business. Wow. More power to you, brother. I feel like I always get lost in spreadsheets, so I, I did not grow up in them. I, I do things like, a, I, typically it'll be like a first draft for something for us. We'll do it in a spreadsheet and then we'll move it to some tool, but... Well, very cool. So you are from not America, which is a great thing for us to have some more international guests. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? And did that have an impact on you being an entrepreneur later in life? Okay. So I'm based in Portugal, in Porto to be more specific, born and raised, but then move around a bit. I lived in Brazil for about a year. I lived in Dublin for three years. And then I came back here once I decided to start the family, have kids, etc. So now I'm currently based in Portugal, but primarily work North America markets. A, a few projects here and there from Europe, but my primary markets is the US and Canada. And why do you think that is? is I have found the same thing, and I'm curious what your answer is. Why do you think that is? For me, it's deliberate. It's I, I like the business culture. Everything moves fast. It's straightforward. Every, a lot of business owners, I'm not going to say everyone, but a lot of business owners have a growth mindset that, you know, they're, it's not about cutting the pie, it's about making the pie bigger. Uh, and I like to work under that mindset. Mm. And so I feel like it's the right choice for me. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm European and Europe is definitely a strong market, but it is very much a traditional market in the way it operates, in the way business happens. And while I know how to do it, it still feels more at home for me to do business with people that have a much more fast track mindset. Uh, and so that's why it was a deliberate decision of, you know, that's where I want to operate in. And luckily so far, that's been the case. Beautiful. I've kind of heard the same thing. Very traditional model that a lot of European, it's just the startup culture is just different in the United States. Like you said, the, I like the pie analogy, you know, making a bigger pie and not just trying to get a bigger, I, I like that. Did you have any entrepreneurs in your family growing up? Did you kind of have anybody you looked to, to kind of say you wanted to, to run your own business eventually? Yeah, I grew up, so my mom was a teacher, but my dad has, had his own business and nothing related to what I do He It was a civil engineer, but you know, I grew up from a very early age watching the ins and outs, the good and bad of that lifestyle. And it's always something that I've looked up uh, to. So actually throughout my whole career, I've only not worked for myself for six years. So like I did a decade of at the beginning with three businesses, then was kind of hitting a ceiling in terms of my skill sets, my ability to run the business and okay, I need to learn more. So I stopped, joined at the time Web Summit, stayed there for five years then moved into a different startup for another year. And then at the end of 2022, I was like, okay, 
this little voice in the back of my head keeps going. You know, why am I working for somebody else? Why am I not building my own business? And I decided to uh, go back on my own. And so that's when I started to what I'm doing now. What was the what were those things that you thought that you kind of needed to improve on as a business owner? What what, what made you stop and, and go work for Web Summit for a while? Primarily three areas. One was people management. I had like I knew that I wanted to grow a business. I would need to be able to manage people very effectively. And also I had had co-founders. That's a very different relationship than having an employee. And apart from that, I had contractors, freelancers. Still, it's it's a service-based relationship. It's not having someone that is 100% with your company day in, day out. And so that was definitely something that I knew I was lacking and I needed experience. Second part was understanding, curiously enough, how to manage the financials in a much more professional way in the sense of knowing, you know, understanding what does a bit mean? What, what is a PL statement done properly? Not this little mess back, almost like back of the book calculation that I, that I was doing at the time. And the third one was uh, customer acquisition. I had no understanding whatsoever of the different paths you could take, but also how to, you know, segment a market, identify a niche, define your offering, understanding repeat value and compound growth. Like I had glimpses of those things from listening, you know, from more experienced entrepreneurs about it, but not in a way that I could actually hit the ground running and apply it. So it was all very, it felt like luck. It wasn't, you know, there was a lot of hard work to make that luck happen, but it felt like luck most of the time. And I wanted to be in an environment where, you know, be in the room where everyone else is smarter than you kind of thing. Mm. And what, did you learn that stuff from your time at Web Summit or did you engage in some additional kind of education? Like how did you pick up the pieces that you needed? Well, I mean, I'm knowledge driven above all else. So I'm always the kind of guy that's like picking up a book, listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, consuming content. So that's always been a, a constant pattern for me. But definitely working at Web Summit and Kenko then were accelerators because one thing is to read about it and listen about it. Once you're actually doing things, that's it takes a whole different tone and you just go through the lessons so much faster because you know it's in your face. You need to do something about it. It's your responsibility. Someone's gonna come asking and say, okay, is this done or is it not done? And so you need to figure out how to tackle challenges, how to work around them with people or around people. I, I feel like those six years were absolutely fundamental for me to now come like this. Technically, this is my fourth business, but at the same time, it's the first one that I feel, okay, I am actually a professional and I'm doing this not as a young kid that's trying to figure out things. But don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely still figuring out a lot of stuff. But you know, I feel like at least the, the bare bones of the flows and how things should be are in place because of those lessons learned. And those have to come through experience. There, there's no other way than doing it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so tell me about Peng Penguin Objective. First of all, what does the name mean or where did it come from? And second of all, what do you guys do and kind of who do you serve? Okay, so... <laughs> In Portugal, when you incorporate a company, you can pick a name and it's a longer process, or you can pick a name out of a list that the government issued with like, I don't know, 10,000 names or something. I knew I wanted something in English. I knew I wanted something that would be agnostic enough that I could base my business around tech because I wasn't super sure of what my offering was going to be at the time. And when I saw Penguin Objective, I'm a very big fan of Linux. I like ever since I was like 14 years old. And so I saw Penguin. Okay, this remind this connects to me weirdly enough on an emotional level. Let's go with this one. And so that's the story of the name. There's a, a funny story about the mascot for Linux from the designer that originally drafted it. That it's meant to be a penguin right after it has a big fish and it's feeling really comfy, really like oh this is so nice. And so it, it kind of clicked for me and, the, and that's how it came about. I love that. But yeah, it's just like sometimes there's little things in life that just connect dots in your head. 
And what we do is fractional CTO practice, focus on the pre-seed and seed stage startups. So strategy, ops, and code, obviously all around tech, but helping companies bootstrap or start to accelerate, depending on the stage they're at, with not just, you know, it's not, oh, let's contract someone to develop an app. It's, okay, we know we have a business opportunity. Maybe we already have some tech in place and we're seeing challenges. Maybe we don't have anything. How do we get to the next step? And, and that's really where I focus. Beautiful. Um, and so who was your first customer? So my first customer was very lucky. For me, it was two serial, two serial entrepreneurs spotted an opportunity, a business opportunity in a, in a market they know very well, but it could only be driven by tech and they had no experience managing a tech um, company. So they came to me first for advice, not even to engage. Uh, I think similar to how you started your company, it's like, hey, do you still do? Right. Um, and so it was very similar. It's like, hey, I, I'm, I, I have this thing and I wanna get it started, but I don't know how, like, can you just give me some pointers? And I was like, well, you know, that's what I do. Like, do you not want to have a serious conversation about it? And that's how it started. And so, you know, anything from pitch deck, tech strategy, engineering strategy, proof of concept, MVP, it's been, it's been a whole thing. I'm still engaged with them at this point. And it's been a very interesting thing. I knew one of, the, of them, they had been my customer for my first business 10 years ago, 15 years ago, hmm. something like that. And we've always kept in touch, but hadn't really done business together in a long while. And so that person I knew, the other one I knew nothing about them, but it, it's been very fun working with them. Beautiful. And how is your you know, customer profile changed since you started? How have you honed that in? Is it the same exact thing you set out to do? Is Did you know what you set out to do? Is it just kind of morphed naturally by the clients you've gotten? What does it look like now as it was you know, when we started? Very different, like complete opposite. My, my first target were, it was enterprise. And I quickly realized that it's not the market that I want to be in because of how long everything takes, but also the bureaucracy getting in the way of getting things done. You know, what I said uh, earlier about, I like that moving fast mindset, even with the right people within an enterprise, there's still a huge structure behind them and around them that needs to be navigated. And so my first target was to do legacy applications and legacy infrastructure upgrades. Why? Because it's just something I really enjoy. I've always, so I work across the stack, so dev and infra, and I've always loved to tackle those kinds of, of issues where some, you know, the teams are afraid of what's there. They know there's a server there they can't touch. They don't really know why, or an app that no one really changes because it's too fragile at this stage because it's been on for like 10 years. And I love that kind of challenge. So my first outbound client, not someone that came to me, was that through inside sales, like proper researching the, the client, figuring out how to get in touch, understanding opportunity, lead generation, all the kind of stuff. And then after that first experience, I still tried to do a couple more. And then I realized, you know what? Who are the majority of the people that come to me for advice? They're starting businesses or they're at, at early stages. Can I help them like reasonably and enjoy what I'm doing? Yeah, like I like helping other business owners kind of start their team, figuring out the path, figuring out the things that they don't know about that they should know about within the tech realm. And so I shifted completely. And then as a side note here is I had that was one of my biggest challenges at, at the beginning. I hadn't defined my ICP. I hadn't defined my offering. So I was just open to everything and anything, right? You're starting a business, there's no cash flow, there's no projects on the pipeline. Right. It's like, okay, whatever comes my way, you know, it's gonna work something out. Get the car going and then start driving. And it took me a few months to kind of really lean in on the problem of, okay, I need to be very clear about who I want to work with and what I want to help them with. And so in the end, I ended up with two key things. One is a list of disqualifiers for anyone that's either I'm searching for or does outreach to me. And two, a very clear set of, okay, this is the process I go through in discovery to understand whether this is gonna be a good working relationship or it's not. And that's anything from company size because it impacts on decision-making to what kind of tech stack they use 
to even the fact whether are they serial founders or first time founders still trying to figure out everything about this world. And it took a while to get there, but now it's in a stable condition. I love that. It's something that I think people wing, they wing it for a very long time, but I, I love having the process around, you know, really ultra qualifying those leads as they're coming in. The frog slightly to your side. Uh, it was a frog we talked about a while back. Can you tell the story of the frog? Of course. So that's been with me across country moves even. That was acquired in 2016 at the end of my first Web Summit event, working the event. And that's a mascot for a different company that was my first ever client. So as in serious client, like big company, they're a company that was the first search engine in Portugal before before Google, like at the time where you had like AltaVista and Yahoo mm -hmm. uh, and like directory websites. And uh, they started one, just like 12 college kids got together, uh, did that, their thing. They got acquired by the biggest telco uh, in Portugal. And then a few years later after that, I worked with them for, I think, three years or something like that when I was still in college, uh, building a project uh, for them to manage some things uh, at a national level. And because it's like, it has such an emotional thing for me of like, that was my first big client. I found it be on the stage uh, when we went to take the staff photo at the end of the event center stage, like big stage with I think 20,000 people uh, arena or something like that. And it was just dropped behind the sofa and I was like, oh, okay, I'll grab it. And then it's like, it's moved countries with me. It's uh, always there. It's just a, a reminder of where I started, I guess. Favorite to make part sure you never forget where you come from. The whole, my favorite part is that you found it. It wasn't like somebody gave it to you. It wasn't, it was just, it very much kind of describes, you know, your journey and a lot of other people's journey is like you, there's no, nobody's going to come hand, you know, your Yeah, you got to keep your, your, your eyes ideas. open found. and, and see, you got to look at what life throws you and kind of see, can I make something out of this, right? Like with my first company. I started it as a game server hosting company, right? Hosting uh, game servers for like Counter-Strike and stuff like that. That turned into a pivot to web hosting because people started coming to me asking for web hosting because they knew I had a server. And then that started my third business, was, which was a web and DevOps agency. Like sometimes it's, just, not sometimes, so like I, I'm a strong believer that you gotta go for what kind of scares you, but that's if it goes well, it's going to be amazing. Like, and, and that's how you got to look at it. And it's a matter of keeping your eyes open to what's popping up and going, is that something I would enjoy? Great. Is that something I'm going to be able to tackle? Not super sure. Okay, let's figure out a plan and let, let's see if it's worth doing it. And I, I'm a strong believer in that. I love that. Um, the, one other question about <clears throat> your your current user base and I, I hear this or your client base how do you do outbound towards people who haven't started a business yet or who are just like you know because part of your you know your customer profile is those pre-seed companies even companies that haven't really built anything yet are you putting yourself in places where people like that may be looking for people like you, or is there some other method that you're using to find these folks? Cause I always, my, I had another friend of mine who runs an agency for non-technical founders and I always told him it felt like he was playing a game of whack-a-mole, right? Where it's like somebody pops up and says like, I have an idea. And you're like, wham, you have to hit them. Like as soon as they pop up, as opposed to, you know, you know, a series A or series B company, which there's information on, you can find them, you, there's places to go to, to get more information. How are you finding those people who are just have an idea and are trying to build this thing? Like, how do you do outbound towards them? Or is that more inbound? So I have two different channels, one for the ones that I've already started and one for the ones that are yet to start. The, the ones that are yet to start, usually one of, one of three things happen, right? Like either they're starting to ask around about specifics and Reddit is a great place to find people that are trying to start something and you have lots of subreddits from like you know the startup subreddit to the entrepreneur to the co-founder like find a co-founder and stuff like that so i literally just try and be as helpful as i can to everyone like whether that's comments whether it's seeing a post and sending a private message and going hey like look i've tackled you know this part of the challenge that you're asking about 
and here's what I've seen, this and this and that, like just basically don't go into these pitfalls kind of thing. And it's very, you know, it's like any networking. You, you just try to reach as many people as you can and add as much value to them with no, like with, without a catch, no strings attached. From that, a lot of those conversations turn into, oh, like I could actually use, well, not a lot, but enough. I could use help with this and that. And at that stage, like, well, okay, this is what I do. Like, if you want, we can look at a retainer model or something like that and, and go from there. That's one part of it. The other part is network. As people know what I do and they, you know, they think of me, they think fractional CTO helping early stage companies. Naturally, that means that when they hear about something that is related in some shape or form, which sometimes is, you know, people saying, oh, I need a website or people saying, oh, I'm thinking of starting a business. They talk to their friends, right? They have, they're uncertain. They ask around that eventually someone refers and say, hey, you should talk to him. So for pre-seed, that's primarily where I focus. Got it. Very cool, man. Love your story. Uh, we'll definitely be following along uh, the two May journey um if people want actually i have one more question for you before i even give out your information non-business related question if you could do anything on earth and you knew you couldn't fail what would it be a non-profit of some sort probably around homelessness and like something that could have a life impact directly, but not necessarily something big. You know, if I could spend my time just helping others, I think that's where I would start because that's the basic thing that allows anyone to then continue to step up, you know, and, and move up. Um, and I think that's where I would start. I like that. I've never heard that answer before. So that's a great one. A nonprofit for homelessness. I'll put it in for consideration of a great answer. That's a good one. If people want to find you, if they want to find more about Penguin Objective, how do they do that? LinkedIn is probably the best way to interact with me. I'm very active, not an open poster, but very active. So just my name, LinkedIn, to my Dwight. Uh, other than that, ME will send you to my website and you can book a call or uh, learn about my experience, et cetera. Beautiful. We'll link everything in the description. You may have been fantastic, buddy. Thank you for your time today. Have a great rest of your week and a great weekend, okay? Likewise, and thank you for the invite. Thanks, buddy.